<laughs> All right. Hey, everybody. This is Vito Giswaldi from GameZone.com. I'm here with Mike Splacta. Mike, how are you doing? Hey, yo. I'm pretty good. Mike, one of my buddies, of course, on the site. We're playing a new MMO called Rusty Hearts. It's a lot of fun, and we're really excited because we've got one of the producers of the game, Mark Hill, here with us. Mark, how are you? Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm doing great. I'm excited for this. Thanks for uh, taking the time. Absolutely. I mean... As you can see, me and uh, Mike have been running around in this game. We've been having a lot of fun. Mike's almost level 10 already. I'm a little behind him, but we really love uh, Rusty Hearts. It's something different from a lot of other MMOs. I don't know if you want to talk about that real quick. Well, definitely. One of the first things that you mentioned when you're introducing this game is you called it an MMO, right? Right. Um, there's been some controversy about whether or not it actually is or is not an MMO. Now, obviously, it's online, mm -hmm. and it's multiplayer, but it doesn't have... Uh, it doesn't have these big, persistent, world, traditional MMO uh, features, right? Rusty Hearts focuses on action. For some reason, I don't know why I always make girl characters. Oh, no, MMOs, I always so. make... All right, yeah. here's why I always make girl <laughs> characters. If I'm going to spend the next 80 hours playing a video game, why would I want to watch some dude run around when I can clearly have... I actually have, have that same <laughs> mentality. Yeah. yeah, dude, absolutely. So, what, that's one cool thing is about Rusty Hearts is you have these three characters... Uh, that you start with either Angela, Tudor, or Franz. They all have their own unique personality, but it's it's like a story, right? It's a progression. So think um, think like something like God of War, right? God right. of War wouldn't be the same if it if it didn't have Kratos. If it was just like a uh, make your own character, it would be completely different. So this guy right here, Ruska, he can uh, he can craft items for you. For example, if you hit X uh, and you go to item upgrade, yep. uh, that'll open, that'll open your inventory in in a little item upgrade screen. You would then drag an item into that little uh, into the item upgrade box, and it'll tell you exactly how many Wiseman stones you have. What Wiseman stones are things you get in dungeons. You get them as drops, mm -hmm. and these help you upgrade and enchant items. So, if you guys have any in, in your inventory right now, you'll drag an item into the uh, to the box. It'll show you how many Wiseman stones you have and a cost to upgrade it. And then you hit start upgrading. You get a little window that says, "There's there's always a chance to fail," right? So, right. Most of the time you'll succeed, but uh, when you get into a lot of the higher level uh, weapons and you get really high up there, the chance to fail sort of increases a little bit. So it's always sort of a gamble. So that's one thing you can do uh, with your items. You can take your existing items, and with loot that you find in the dungeons, you can sort of uh, uh, graft it to that, and it'll enchant the items. Now if you go over here uh, to the right of Ruska, to our left, you'll find a Dismantler. What he will do is he will take your items that you might not want, your gear and your weapons, anything you find. Because when you go through weapons, you might find, you know, I'm playing as Franz, but yeah. I might find a, uh, an Angela sword, right? So obviously I can't equip it because I'm not Angela. But I can take that and I can go to the dismantler and I can drag it in there and dismantle it. And, and I just got a little bit of steel out of that. Perfect. So... There's some really cool, so we're doing it on a very basic level right now. Like I just uh, dismounted some pants and I got some poor steel also. It's a very, very basic usage, but there's some costumes and things later in the game. For example, uh, you may have seen in some media out there where there's like these uh, sea creature costumes. Yes. Like, uh, Monster the Shark, right? So, <laughs> That's the one I want. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, so if you're France, you can wear the shark one, but if you, if you somehow obtain um, Angela, she's the octopus, you can take it to the dismantler, and the dismantler will give you extremely rare items from that, from which you can take those items to Ruska and craft these new... We, there's, like, these sea creature weapons also. So there's, like, a big starfish. Oh, wow. Um, so. Now, that plays into guess, another yeah. part of the game that I really like, yeah. is that the graphics are awesome. It's this very cool right. cel-shaded anime style. It's got a lot of character. I mean, when you see these animal character costumes, you're like, wow, I want to be a shark. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's and, what and I'm that's, saying. <laughs> yeah, why would you not want to be a shark? So, um, you know, that's what I love about the game. First, like, like you said, the look, the cell shade is really, really cool. It keeps everything really crisp and clean. But at the same time, the game doesn't take itself super seriously, you know? Right. Um, you can get a shark costume, or you can get an octopus costume, uh, and it's just fun, right? It just concentrates on being fun. So, you get a lot of really funky stuff. I don't know if you guys have read the dialogue at all, but our, uh, our kind of writing team did an amazing job on localization. A lot of the dialogue is really tongue-in-cheek, really funky. And, yeah, and I've uh, actually really been enjoying the story. I know Mike just skips past it because he just wants to kick things, <laughs> but I've actually so, been paying attention to the story, and it's pretty interesting. I just want to yeah, get yeah. down to the nitty-gritty, that's so. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hey, let's get down to it right now. So we're in front of a dungeon right now. Let's, uh, let's head right in there. All right. 
very cool. So we're all there. Uh, I'm not sure which one to use the party leader. But um, me, so where where should I go? Wine cellar or I have, uh, cellar sewers? All right. Let's do the harder one. Let's too hard, perfect. Let's kick it up. So we'll some, see some things as we're going through this. For example, the uh, the sort of item auto distribution system. You'll see a sort of little slot machine thing, and it'll scroll through everyone's everyone in the party's names, and whoever it lands on uh, gets to keep that item. That slot machine's uh, been uh, screwing me, Mark. I think has it really? I think you programmed it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been getting most of the. Mike items gets all the cool stuff. <laughs> I actually told the developers to write in a line of code to exclude you exclusively <laughs> from everything. So I'm sorry about that. See you, see you right now. So we saw okay. the little hey. slot machine there. Hey, I wanna. I got a Wiseman stone. All right, okay, there you go. Like the first one. <laughs> now what I like about this is anyone who's pretty much pl played a brawler knows how to get right into it. I mean, you hit buttons, stuff explodes everywhere, you're getting combos like crazy, and it's just a ton of fun. Yeah, definitely. There's just a lot of stuff going on on screen. Um, and with the bright cel-shaded animation, it never gets clunky, and it never looks ugly. Like, it always looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah, you um, can always kind of see what's going on. You never get lost, even with, like, 50 guys on the screen. Definitely. So there is, uh, so like you said, it's, it's very accessible to people that have played Brawlers before. Um, but at the same time, there's a whole combo system and the chain hit system, which you'll see on the right. So what we're seeing are more hardcore, more intense players are finding out these these attack combos. They're just getting them these huge, crazy chain hits. Um, we actually did an in-game event. It's a cool little cutscene right there. Yeah. Yep. Johan, he's uh, uh, one of the skill masters. That's another cool. thing I like is that mid-dungeon you'll actually have cutscenes. Yeah, definitely. Um, and voiced, which is really cool too. That's a nice touch as well. Yeah, some of so, it, some of it is voiced. The voicing was really cool. We're still working on some of that. Um, it turns out some of the dialogue is a little quieter uh, than we thought it was going to be, or than we were hoping it would be. So we have our our sound engineers working on all that right now. Very cool. Now, one cool thing that uh, in combat that not a lot of people really really know about or really utilize is the just guard. Do you guys know about that? I know yeah, about it, I'm uh, not good at using it. <laughs> I'm not good at it either. Yeah. It's it's really, really hard to get the hang of, but once you do it, it's really, really cool. Um, so you can, so you hit block. Are you guys using a controller or a keyboard? I am using I'm a actually, keyboard right now. Yeah, me I have too. used a controller though, and that's another interesting point about the game, is that you can actually use a 360 gamepad or any PC gamepad to play the game. Right. Right, right. Logitech controller, um, Xbox 360 controller yeah, you can yeah. use. Um, some people try using... their own play style, I guess. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the brawlers, you know, it's it's an arcade style game, and it uh, it's um, the controls. I mean, they're they're not meant to be big and clunky. That's meant to be fast and just very accessible. So yeah. uh, I think I, I personally I play with controller. Um, oh wow! But uh, yeah, I, I mean, I like either way. I'm, I'm playing on the <laughs> keyboard right now, which is pretty cool. I like being able, yeah, the keyboard gives me uh, easy access to all the special skills, which the game is kind of littered with uh, all these different moves you can kind of try and chain into each other and keep your combo going, yeah, which I definitely. really like. I found that my, like, whirlwind punch seems to do pretty well, <laughs> whatever uh, that yeah. is. Angela, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, definitely. This Angela one has... that, like, hits everything on the screen, it makes me yes. happy. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Angela has this really cool skill that I like. It's, it's best if you're in a party. Um, I'm not sure if you've learned it yet, but um, it's like this little tornado. I have and, the tornado. Yeah, so the, I'm not sure if you, if, do you know how to use it? Do you know what it's good for? Now, do I need to get into a cluster of enemies and activate that? Yeah, so if you, you can get a cluster of enemies. So what we're, Let's uh, try it real right quick, here. we're at sort of a, okay. a fork and throw. Yeah, try it right here. But hold, yeah. hold it down is what you have to do. Oh, okay. Yeah, and it'll cluster them all together, and then we will go in. Oh, See, there we go. Oh, man. And now we can really combo up. That's yeah, max totally. damage right there. Yeah, so it's a little, little whirlwind. That's awesome. Exactly. So now I think so you're going to talk about these branching paths within the dungeons. Exactly. So we're actually at one right now. Um, earlier, we could have just gone straight to the boss. But what oh, we wow. did instead is we're going to this room. We're going to talk to Johan right here. Out for a second, and then over here, there's a little lever uh, which is not activated yet. But basically, in the boss room of this dungeon, uh, maybe one of us doesn't have the quest for it yet. But in here, there's that little lever, and in the boss room of the dungeon, there is a—it's—it's uh, it's like flooded with water. 
So you can you can fight the boss in there with the water. It's fine. It just slows you down. Like you're very clunky. And the uh, the cool thing is, is the enemies you fight against are like these fish based enemies. Yeah. So they're still they're still fast and powerful within the water. Now, if you go, if you take this kind of diverging path right here, and if you had the quest available, you could uh, uh, you could flip that lever, and it would actually drain the water out of the boss dungeon. Oh wow! So, so you can uh, spend a little more time in the dungeon and prepare for the boss fight that way. Totally. So there's some really cool exploration. It's not just all straight up linear, um, uh, you know, just going from start to finish. And the, the the first four dungeons are pretty linear, but those are sort of the tutorial dungeons, anyways. Uh, but after that, once you get to about like the second group of dungeons, like these ones, the cellar and the library and the labyrinth, um, you get a lot more puzzle elements, uh, a lot more exploration elements. So it's really, really cool. Yeah, and I really like that the dungeons are not like corridors. Like there's a lot of running around, you know, backtracking and that sort of thing. Which is yeah, really definitely. Cool. And wait till you get to the uh, to the next set of dungeons, the cathedral area. Um, there are some dungeons open up right now, and we have our first content update coming soon, which will open up the rest of them. Um, you're gonna see a lot of really cool stuff in the dungeons. Oh god, this guy is big. <laughs> the armored big and butcher. Scary. Ah! So the armored butcher dominated him. Dominated. Involved, he's Grab involved those cards. A regular butcher. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, we're already gaming the reward screen. Oh, there's a card. There's a card. <laughs> All right. No, this is my favorite part. I love this. <laughs> yes, and it's cool because we're in a party, so we all pull from the same deck, right? So whoever gets the good stuff first gets to keep it. Yeah, and throughout right. the dungeon, you find these cards, and you know they add more bonuses to this little uh, select screen. Ooh, we got a silver card. I did find nice. a strategy here. I usually wait till Vito picks his first. Because I always screw up and don't get anything. <laughs> Do it again. So Mike picks whatever I don't pick. <laughs> go first. Oh, yeah, no, go, for helmet. go for a silver. I'm always the guy who pays oh, money to reselect, yeah, though. Oh, there's two silvers on the board. What's so it gonna you, be? Yeah. Did you get it? I'm not gonna reselect. Mark, you gotta pick one. Hey, uh, you gonna reselect? I, I don't uh, have enough money to reselect. Uh, what I actually thought the silvers. The one Listenosh picked. Um, that's I picked it at the same time, so I thought I'd actually picked it. But oh, you thought you got <laughs> that? Oh, <laughs> Mike gamed you there a little bit. <laughs> you definitely. Did. Right, so at the end of each dungeon, uh, you, you have a couple choices. You can obviously go to the dungeon store right here. So you pick up so much loot in each dungeon that you're always, like, it, it's always sort of clogging up your inventory. So you yeah, can go straight to the dungeon store. You can either right-click on the item or you can drag it in and just get paid back for it right there. Yeah, that's and you get a lot cool. of cool for that. Yeah, a lot of this also stuff to, is... To out. break down the items, you have to actually go back to town to use use that um, machine, right? To dismantle, yes. To dismantle, yeah. right, okay. Exactly. One thing you always want to do, uh, one thing I always make it a habit of doing is at the end of a dungeon, go to the dungeon store and make sure you repair all your gear. All um, right. Too many times I've seen people uh, continue on, go to another dungeon and go into a boss fight and their gear gets fully damaged. Yeah. And there's, I mean, they if, if they don't have a, like a backup weapon on them, uh, they'll either, I don't know. <laughs> die. <laughs> die or have to restart or something. Which, oh, very cool. Uh, Ooh, look at this level 25. She looks so much cooler than me. Amelia Hearts is one of our top community members. Uh, she's a great, good player, very knowledgeable in the game. Uh, she's very cool. And oh, she looks good. Yeah. Look at that. Look I that know. Hair. Making me look like a chump. I have, like, the stock <laughs> character. <laughs> well, I, I have a blue bustier, I guess. I'm talking yeah. about dressing up my little doll. <laughs> So one cool thing about uh, costumes is they don't only make you look cool. They have random what we call options. They're like buffs. Yeah. So each, each costume piece you get can have up to three buffs. And it could be something like um, increased magic defense, increased attack damage uh, by 2% or, you know, by whatever. And are, and are those different. permanent buffs? Like they stay, stay on there? Or? They are permanent, yes. Oh, they wow, cool. Yeah. That's for your costume so, pieces, you said? Those are for your costume pieces. So oh, if you wow. go to the shop, you, you, uh, say you buy a costume piece with money, they're a couple bucks, um, you'll get an option. There's also another item that will allow you to sort of re-roll the options. So if you buy a costume piece and let's say you have one kind of weak option, uh, you can pick up an alchemist jar, put that thing into the alchemist jar, and it'll sort of give you a new option, and hopefully it'll be something better. Oh, very cool. So if you get yeah. something you really think you look cool in, but the buff sucks, you can change that around. Exactly. You'll still look good, but you'll get a better buff. And now you can also earn titles by doing different quests and fulfilling requirements, right. which is really cool. 
definitely uh, the title's really cool. Uh, my favorite one is the uh, the Curtis Killer. So there's a, there's a boss that the general public hasn't seen yet, but I've seen. And if oh, you darn. Don't, <laughs> yeah, you kill him a number of times, you get one called the Curtis Killer, which is pretty sweet. I like that one. I think we just have now, the basic title, which gives us plus uh, 30 HP, but hopefully we'll be earning some fun ones. Yeah. So I actually have a question. Um, cause on the uh, character select screen, I already saw the fourth character is, is, is there, but not selectable, and it's teasing me because I really want to play as her. So uh, <laughs> what information can you release on that? Like, what, what uh, is she going to be playing? Oh, man. Uh, Christine would kill me if I talked too much about her right now. Oh, <laughs> you can't put her on the character select screen and tell her tell us nothing. <laughs> what a tease! Well, yeah, so uh, tease us, Mark. <laughs> we do. We have more coming, and we have more coming soon. And uh, this new character adds something very, very cool uh, to the gameplay. Uh, very fun, and uh, I'm sorry <laughs> to be oh. very right out. <laughs> <laughs> I managed, but, to, I managed but, to trick the PR rep out of the room, and I don't get anything for it. Yeah, I know. Uh, darn it. She would probably kill me. But, um, <laughs> but news on that is coming very, very soon. Do not worry. It's coming very soon. Right. Cool. Very cool. There's so much to do in the game. And what we went over today, you know, just doing a little bit of item crafting and dismantling and a little bit of dungeon crawling, it's really only at the tip of the iceberg. Um, there's, there's a lot to do, and it's really cool, and you're always... There's always something to do, you know. We we removed the stamina system, so now players can play as much as they as their little rusty hearts desire. So it's, uh, <laughs> Which is good for that. us. That's awesome. I'm yeah, gonna be playing so. this one all night. Well, Very I tell cool. you, ton of fun, Mark. Thank you so much for going through the dungeon with us. Uh, you guys look great. It's my pleasure. If you can bump us up, you know, 20 levels from your little admin keyboard somewhere, we'd appreciate <laughs> it. But. What is the max level, by the way? Yeah. What is top level on this game? Top level right now is 25. Um, th there will be an update coming very soon, which will increase that. Uh, which will increase that, and we will very be cool. announcing that tomorrow, actually. And I think Mike oh. had one quick suggestion. He wants a turtle costume. I don't know if that <laughs> could happen. That is a really good idea. I, we love turtles, apparently. Mike we love turtles. <laughs> <laughs> actually, yeah, I actually have one more question for you. Because um, in the in the cash shop, uh, there's a pet option. Are you right. are you allowed to talk about that or? Um, I so uh, the game will have pets. Um, eventually Look at this we tab I can't click. <laughs> exactly, uh, it's gonna have pets along with a lot more content and a lot more updates and uh, and new things. That'll be the pets are gonna be a little later on down the road. Um, but uh, yeah, they're coming. We got a lot of a lot of other stuff coming as well. That's All very right. So cool. if there's no turtle costume, I at least want a turtle pet. <laughs> <That's real bad. laughs> okay, that might be that might be easier. <laughs> I love it. There's a lot to look forward to, and honestly, it's it's a thrill to play this one. And thanks again for joining us. Uh, this has been Mark Hill of Perfect World. We love him. We love the company. We love the game. Rusty Hearts. You guys are great. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, if you have more questions, let me know. All right. We'll All right, let you get back so to much. work. And uh, right. have a great day, man. All right. Thanks, guys. Rock and roll, Mike. Let's go get some levels. All right. <laughs> yeah.